new murder charges for the suspected Long Island serial killer, a Wisconsin prison warden and eight of his staff face prison time themselves, and a three-year-old is fatally stabbed in Ohio in an apparent random attack. Welcome to this week's Last Week in Crime. Remember this guy? This is Rex Heuerman. For those who don't know, Heuerman is suspected of being the Long Island serial killer. Between 1996 and 2011, 11 bodies were found on or near the Gilgo Beach area of Long Island, New York. When Heuerman was arrested in July of 2023, he was accused of the murders of three women, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello, as well as being the main suspect in the murder of Maureen Brainerd Barnes. In July of 2023, Heuerman was also charged with her death. All four women were known escorts who were reported missing between 2007 and 2010 and were found in shallow graves in 2010 near Gilgo Beach. On June 7, 2024, Heuerman was charged with the murders of two more women, Sandra Castilla and Jessica Taylor. Both women, who were murdered a decade apart, Castilla in 1993 and Taylor in 2003, have been linked to Heuerman through DNA evidence according to the new indictment. Remember, everything is alleged and Heuerman is considered innocent until proven guilty, but it's looking more and more like the Long Island serial killer case is finally about to be solved. That said, I'd be very interested to know if there are any other unsolved murders to which he could possibly be connected. Serial killers are creatures of habit, and I have a difficult time believing Heuerman, if he is indeed the serial killer prosecutors believe him to be, just stopped killing in 2011. Now, we move on to Wisconsin, where Randall Hepp, the former warden of Wapon Correctional Institution, the state's oldest maximum security prison and often compared to the prison in the Shawshank Redemption, now faces a felony charge of misconduct in public office after an investigation into the deaths of four inmates over the past year. One death wasn't discovered for at least 12 hours after the inmate suffered a stroke, and another was ruled a homicide. That inmate had been in solitary confinement and his water had been shut off. Eight others from the prison staff faced felony charges of inmate abuse, including two correctional officers and one sergeant. Those three are also charged with misconduct in office, same as the former warden. Again, they're all considered innocent until proven guilty. I rarely have sympathy for prison inmates. They made their choices, and from those choices came consequences. But nobody, and I do mean nobody, deserves to be treated the way it's been alleged just because they're in prison. Everyone deserves to be treated with at least some dignity, with the possible exception being kitty diddlers. Finally, in what I'm certain will be one of the most horrific stories I'll cover all year, a woman, Margot Wood, and her three-year-old son, Julian, were viciously and brutally attacked by another woman in a seemingly random attack outside of the Giant Eagle supermarket in North Olmsted, Ohio. Bianca Ellis, the alleged attacker, stabbed the two victims for seemingly no reason. Julian was stabbed in his face and back, while Margot was stabbed in the shoulder. Both victims were rushed to the hospital, where little Julian would sadly succumb to his injuries. Ms. Ellis, who allegedly stole the knife used from a nearby thrift store shortly before the attack, was apprehended quickly, a short distance from the store, still carrying the knife, and is now being held on a $5 million bond, up from a $1 million bond initially set at her arraignment. And just like that, I'm forced to reevaluate my stance on treating prisoners with dignity. Based on her behavior during her most recent court appearance earlier this week, smiling, giggling, basically mugging for the camera, this woman has yet to show an ounce of remorse for the savage murder of a three-year-old child and right now isn't all that deserving of being treated as a human, let alone with dignity. There's other information about Ellis that has yet to be confirmed, so I'm hesitant to put it in a video, but should that info be confirmed, I'll add it to any follow-up video about this heartbreaking story. That's all I've got for this video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more just like this. Until the next time, stay safe out there.